everyone, Michaela with LearnWire here, and today we are going to go over Instacap. Now, Instacap is a Chrome extension that lets you instantly screenshot images and then make collaborative comments about those screenshots. Now, this is best going to be used by graphic designers, marketers, and quality assurance departments, and this is going to be a great alternative to Loom. Now, Instacap does have a 3.5 average taco rating across five reviews, so it's not great, but we're going to take a look, see if those reviews are warranted or not. Instacap was founded by Brian Osberger, and looking at the questions and reviews, looks like he's not super responsive to reviews, but to questions, it does look like he responds to just about everything. So very nice, Brian. Very cool. Now, there are three different licensing tiers that you can purchase. License tier one at $29 includes all available features and you get one user. License tier two at $109 comes with all available features up to 10 users and you also get the collaboration feature. And finally, license tier three at $249 includes all available features up to 50 users and you also get the collaboration feature. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look. Now, this is our Instacap dashboard. Now, I do like the color scheme of it. It's very bright. It's very eye-catching. We've got nice, vibrant colors. We've got some fun little graphics that make it interesting, but they don't take up too much space. As we scroll down a little bit, we've already got our projects. So we can look at expired projects. We can look at deleted projects. And then we can also look at our non-project captures. So if we just want to upload maybe an image that we might use for multiple projects, or maybe they just don't really fit in a project, but you still want some feedback on them, you can upload those right here. Now we do have this handy little bright green create button right here, where we can either create a screen capture or create a project folder or we can start a new project right here. So let's go ahead and hit this add project. And here, this is where we're gonna name our project. We can name it pretty much anything. So we'll just call it untitled project. We'll create that. And here is that folder right here. As we click on it, we have all of our captures right here. We don't currently have any captures yet, but let's go ahead and grab one right now. I'm actually going to grab a screen cap from my personal website just so I can get a little bit of feedback on it. I promise my feelings won't get hurt too bad. All right, this is my homepage, admittedly super basic, super bleh, but we're going to just go ahead and we have our extension right here. Let's go ahead, click on it, and we have the option to free select so we can capture any little portion on our screen. We can capture the entire screen we can capture the full page, or we can capture and automatically add it to our project. Let's do a free selector. All right, so let's just pull this up, pull this down, and I think that looks pretty good. So then we'll hit this bright pink capture button, and here is our screenshot. So from here, I can go ahead and view it, I can comment on it, so I can click on here and it'll add a little pin and I can just write comment and there is my comment. I can see that it is currently unresolved, so from here I can go ahead and reply to it or I can add an emoji to it or I can resolve it. So let's reply, we'll say get good scrub with a winky face, okay, interesting. I went to click on the search bar and it just closed the emoji box, but the second time it seemed to have worked. And there's my response and I will mark that as resolved. So we see that our little pin has turned kind of clearish and it has a check mark on it. And as we navigate over to our resolved comments, we have our comment right here and our one singular reply. All right, so then if I need to annotate it or maybe I wanna mark it up, maybe I wanna write bad on it. I can do so right here. I can 
undo what I've just done. I can zoom in, zoom out. I can add a frame to it. All of this, very bad. I've already scribbled on it. I can make an arrow marker, specifically this, very bad. And with this arrow marker, I can make it longer or shorter, or I can change where exactly it is pointing to. I have a text, so I can type something right here if I don't want to write it out. And I can similarly move that around right here. I can rotate it, make it bigger, make it smaller, etc., etc. We also have an ellipse tool that we can make a nice circle around. And down here, we do have our marker customizations. So it's currently red. I can make it a blue outline. I can make it a teal. I can make it yellow, purple, pink, black, or white. Or if I don't want an outline at all, I can just hit this fancy little no button and it will make it completely transparent. Let's keep it on red. We can also change the fill of our ellipse. So I will go ahead and make that clear so we can see through it and see text here, bad, angry face. We can also change the line width. So we wanna make this very bold. Also, and we can also change the line style of it. So we have a bold, thick, intact line, or we can make it dotted or with longer dashes or with a dot dash Morse code pattern. I can also highlight any text. And then last but not least, I can make a callout marker. So it looks like it has a nice little text, like a talk bubble right here. And I can rotate it and move it around. And my text is here. Once we're done marking up our image, I can hit this fancy little save and all of my beautiful work has been saved. Now in this upper right hand corner, I can see how many views our project has, as well as when it was last updated. Now say that I want to change how this is going to look by my collaborators. I can go ahead and hit this little edit pencil button right here. So I've come in here and it, looks like it would be really simple to move this image around because right here it's off to the side and I don't really like that but I can't I don't know how to center it uh, nope I guess we just are going to have to deal with it so we can choose the color of our little workboard as you can see there are a bunch of different um options that you can choose from. You can do a gradient style background. You can do a solid color background. We can do an image or we can do a frame. So we can add a glass frame or we can add a dark glass frame or a Mac frame or a windows frame or a fancy frame or whatever kind of frame that we want. There's also quite a bunch of customization that you can do. We have all of these fancy little gradients right here, but say, you know, these are fine, but they're not exactly what I want. We can go ahead, click on this. And if we want to change the color, we just have to click on this little color button right here. And we can pick out exactly what color that we want. That looks pretty good. And let's make this like that. And you can see it's updating in real time. We can also change the way that the gradient is going. So if we want it diagonal or if we want it the other way diagonal or the other way diagonal or the fourth way diagonal, we can do it. We can do it north, south, east, west, whatever direction we want, we can do. Same with our solid color background. We can choose a bright teal or a exact same bright teal or this purple, or this slightly different purple, or we can go ahead and change the exact color right here. And there are plenty of images for you to choose from. Or if you don't want anything in the background, you can just do a nice clear background right here. We'll do this cool little bump background. Now, if we want to change exactly where our image is, we have these nice little sliders right here. We can change 
how rounded our corners are. If we want super pointy corners, we can set that to zero and they're super pointy. If we want super rounded corners, we can set that all the way to 100 and our corners are super rounded. We can change the corners on our canvas. So right here you see we have very pointed corners or we can round those out if we so choose. We can also add a drop shadow to our image, strengthen that shadow or weaken the shadow. We can also go ahead and change our image position right here. Now this is super sensitive. You'll see as I push it all the way off to the side, it's just gone. The image is gone. Now if we want, say it's kind of off and we want to adjust it by a little bit more, we can use the arrow keys on our keyboard to go up and down just ever so slightly so we can put it exactly where we want. Or we have these handy little image position boxes right here. So if I want it in the upper left hand corner, I can put it there. If I want it in the lower right hand corner, I can put it there. Now say we've made all of these changes and we realized that we messed up and we actually liked how it was originally. We can go ahead and hit this reset to original. That does not quite seem to do anything. We can also change the resolution of our image to fit a number of different presets. So if we want maybe a YouTube thumbnail or an Instagram post or what have you, we can click on this little drop down button right here and we can see, oh, it's a video thumbnail. We have our news feed. We have an open graph or a landscape photo for Twitter or a landscape photo for Indeed or what have you for whatever social media that you want. Let's go ahead and do our news feed. Ah, I see. By selecting a new preset that changed, that recentered that for us, so that's really nice. We can also change the size of our image right here manually. So if we want it to be 1140 by 1236, we can make that right here. We also have the option to get rid of the watermark. We have the option to add a grid overlay to our background. We also have the option to get rid of our background completely. So I don't want it. I don't want to see it. It's gone. Now, once it's done, I can go ahead and hit this save button. And I can either save and exit or I can go ahead and download or I can go ahead and download that image directly. Let's just go ahead, save and exit. And there it is right there. One thing I noticed is that I thought now I could be wrong. My memory can be a little iffy on the best of days. But if my memory is correct, I thought that I had made it in my untitled project screen. So I'm a little intrigued that it didn't automatically add it to that project, but we can go ahead and add that to our project now by clicking on the three buttons, hitting move capture, and we can move it to our untitled project. Move, and there it is. Now, another thing that's really cool is if we just want to see the comments on our image, Maybe we are super familiar with this image because we've been working on it for hours or days or what have you. I can just go ahead and click on this and it'll kind of bring up a short summary. We can see what the image looks like and then we can also see all of the comments and all of the replies to our comment right here. And that was Instacap. I really liked it. I think it is a really unique take on something that a lot of people struggle with. I don't feel like there's a huge market of these types of apps. Personally, I typically would have used like the Google suite for this and that's not super intuitive. I do like that you can add a fancy background to it. I do like that you can draw right on it. You can circle things. You can make a nice arrow to it. So you can collaborate with a lot of people and give very clear, very concise feedback to the screenshots and the images that you would like. There are some bugs. I'm not going to pretend that there aren't. The fact that the canvas was kind of down in the corner and half off my screen when I was trying to edit it and I couldn't easily really figure out how to change it or I couldn't drag and drop my screen around. Not a huge fan of that. 
but ultimately I do feel like this is a nice and handy tool that you can use if you want feedback on your website or on an image or on what have you. So I would probably give this one a solid 4.3 out of 5 stars because what it does, it does pretty well. It does have those bugs to it, but it's not a total app breaker. I do love that it's an extension as opposed to a completely separate program. I don't have to download all of these different programs and take up space on my hard drives and take up RAM power and all of this stuff. It's just right there in the corner ready for me to use. I don't have to go into my windows and grab the snipping tool and what have you and do all this stuff and upload it. I can just go click, drag to what I want to capture and upload it straight to the project. Now, if you have any questions, concerns, please leave them in the comments below. And as always, I will see you next time. Goodbye.